Hi guys, my name is Evan, and today the question we're going to be answering is how do we replace a refractory panel in a wood burning fireplace insert? So here I've got my wood burning fireplace insert in my home, and as you can see there's a problem with it. So the first question we should probably answer is what is a refractory panel and why would you need to replace it? The refractory panel is the masonry lining of your wood stove. It is very similar to fire brick, and what it does is it insulates the metal from the extreme heat of the wood burning. So if you don't have this lining or if it's damaged, what you risk is warping or rotting out or burning out your wood stove. In extreme cases, it could be a fire hazard. So it's important that you get it fixed. Um, as you can see here, the reason I need mine fixed is pretty obvious. I got a hole in it right now, but hopefully, and if you catch this before I did, you'll want to replace them when you notice cracks developing, okay? And that's going to be when you want to get on top of this because it's a fire safety issue and you want to replace it when it needs to be replaced uh, so that you don't have any problems. A good rule of thumb is as soon as you can slip a credit card through any of the cracks, it's time to think about replacing it. Actually, with my stove, I realized that there were some larger cracks forming and within about a week, this piece fell out of it. So the point from which I noticed a problem to the point which I had a major problem was only about a week. It was actually already on my to-do list and then suddenly after one fire I realized this big chunk had fallen out and that put the brakes on my use of this fireplace. So it's been out of commission for about two weeks until I can get it fixed. Okay. Um, other than that, the difficulty on this, I've never done it, so I'll give you an honest opinion at the end, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Something probably an intermediate um, DIY home improvement type person can handle. It is something that's going to involve a circular saw and it's something that you need to do right for safety reasons. So, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I also don't think it's going to be the hardest thing in the world. Uh, for materials today and cost, let's go over. There's not too much materials you need. You need a replacement refractory panel. Mine's wrapped up in this bubble wrap. It's fragile, so handle it carefully. I had some trouble sourcing this locally. In fact, I called around to several places, and the only option they would give me is a complete new kit specifically made for my stove, which was going to cost me about $400, which was a bummer because I only need to replace this back panel. All right, so what I did is I went online and I found on Amazon, where else, sheet good products of this refractory panel. So this is just generic cut to size sheet of this same insulating masonry material. Other than that, you're going to need some high heat mortar. It should say high heat mortar on it here, and it also says also excellent for patching fireplaces. You'll see what we're going to need this for uh, later on. However, I made a mistake, and I actually grabbed the tube of the black stuff. They make this in beige and or gray, and that's going to look better inside this stove. So I made a mistake and carelessly grabbed the black one, so I'm going to have to go back, and that's going to cost me a trip. So don't have it cost you a trip. Uh, tools on this, not too big of a deal with your tools. You probably have them at home. A circular saw. You're going to need a circular saw with a masonry cutting blade on it to cut the new panel. Okay, you don't need to buy an expensive diamond saw blade for 75 bucks. Just go spend five dollars on one of those sacrificial grinding masonry blades for your, your circular saw. Other than that, you're going to need a screwdriver or a socket because there's a couple of screws you need to get the retaining clip out with. And then you're going to need a caulking gun for your high heat mortar, tape measure, straight edge, and a pencil just to lay everything out. So that's where we're going to be going uh, from there. And it's actually dumping about two feet of snow right now, so we're not going to be doing any of the heavy lifting today, but I'll just give you an overview of the steps behind this, and then I'll take it step by step later on. So the, if you notice, there are actually five different refractory panels in this stove. There's one up here with a hole in it. This is going to be the bummer one to break because it's got a hole in it, which is for the flue, which is harder to cut. Then you have the bottom piece, two side pieces, and the back piece is the piece that we're going to replace today. So um, what you're going to have to do, there's this little metal clip that's held in with some screws. You're going to have to remove that. Carefully remove each of the panels you need to to get this piece out. They're just dry set in there, so as long as you're careful not to break them or drop them, you shouldn't have any problems. Then I'm going to pull this out in as uh, few pieces as possible. I'm going to have to put it all together like a puzzle on top of that to use as a template to trace it cut it and reinstall it. So uh, hopefully this goes well for me and I'll let you know the steps. Thanks. Hi guys, it's Evan again and we're ready to get started on this fireplace. So the first thing I've done is laid out some tarps around here. I've put some pieces of cardboard off to the side so as I remove pieces I can set it aside because this has already been a very messy job for me. So uh, just be prepared for that. I've also turned off the furnace so it doesn't circulate soot around the house. Okay, and for the same reasons, gloves and glasses are going to be really important for this whole job because you don't want to be catching rust in the eyes and you don't want to be cutting yourself with something rusty and nasty. 
Okay, so now that we're ready to go, the first step is there's a little metal retaining piece of flashing up here, and that's kind of locking in all the different pieces of um, masonry in here. And I went in there with a flashlight, and I found that there were five screws that I just loosened with a Phillips head. So I took all five screws out, and I set it aside, and once you do that, you should be able to just kind of pull this out, and this piece of flashing comes out. Now, that's the, pretty much the only thing holding this uh, masonry sheets in. So now I should be able to get in there and carefully disassemble. They're dry fit and I can also already see how they're shifting around. Alright, we're going to start removing the panels of masonry out of this fireplace so that I can get to this back one because it's actually tucked into the back and front and behind this one and this one and this one. So I'm just going to be taking them out one piece by one piece, taking my time. It's not super pleasant to crawl in there, it's like crawling under a truck. But just take your time and be careful with it and it should come out no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and see if I can film it for you. Here is the top piece, and as you can see, it has a hole for the flue in it. This is the one you do not want to break, because cutting that top hole is going to be hard if you have to do that. Go ahead and vacuum out back there, because there's a lot of soot and stuff. But uh, the next step we're going to be doing after I clean up all this is laying this broken piece out on the new piece of panel so I can trace it, and then we're going to be cutting it. I'll show you how to do that next. All right, folks, we moved outside in anticipation of cutting this panel because it's going to be very messy. So I'm going to set it up outside so I don't bring that mess inside. Um, what you see I have here is actually the new piece of refractory panel. And this is actually the back side of it. So the front side of it's got the same brick pattern stamped to it as the original piece does. But I flipped it over in the back. I'm going to trace it out on the back and cut it from the back for two reasons. The first reason is that it's easier to run a circular saw over a smooth surface. So this will help me get an accurate cut. And the second reason is that, um, I don't know if you can see in the picture, but these side pieces of this original one are tapered. And when we cut that taper, it'll be easier to cut it this way. So I just mark the outermost edge, angle the saw blade in towards the center of the piece as I cut it, and I'll cut that taper rather than me trying to figure out how far and I have to cut based on the hypotenuse of these little angles. So what I've done here is I've taken my time to really put this piece back together and really get it nice and tight so I get the most accurate drawing and template that I have for this new piece, okay? And I've used the factory edge of the panel right here as the bottom piece, and that's going to be nice and flat and square, and that will be the bottom, so I don't have to cut that. And then the top piece, I've just drawn a line, and these side pieces, I've drawn a line too. So I've traced this out at this point, okay? And I'm going to remove it for you so you can see that I have the template. nice and bold and what I'm just going to do right here is I'm going to write T right here so I know that's the top okay and then side and then that way we know how to orient it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a straight line and I'm going to extend this top line all the way across this panel and that's because when I cut this panel I'm going to cut this piece out as one long strip. I'm not going to try to end and break it in the middle or anything crazy like this. This is going to preserve the most usable pieces of a refractory panel if I ever have to do something with it again. So this, so as I cut this out, what you'll see is that I cut this piece out as one piece. I'm going to cut this side piece out as this piece. And then I've left a little bit in from the edge here because I'm going to have to cut that bevel into this edge. And it's easiest to do that when you have a little bit of material to cut into. It's harder to do it when you're cutting right along the edge because you'll break it out a little bit. So I've just moved it in about an inch. So um, the cutting is going to be a pretty messy job, so I'm not going to videotape it, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a circular saw, okay? Here's the tool you need. It's a circular saw, and it has a masonry grinding blade in it. So this is just um, essentially an abrasive blade that kind of worries away the masonry as it goes along. And really, the deal with this, guys, is slow and steady. So it's not going to be something you win the race with. It's going to be dusty. It's going to be loud. Just be prepared for it with a mask and glasses and just go slow and steady. It's going to be a 90 degree cut all the way across here. And then what I will do is I will take my saw and I will adjust the angle on it side to side like so, so that as I cut in, it will match the bevel on the original piece. Alright, so I'm going to put this camera inside so it doesn't get hurt, and I'm going to make these cuts, and I'll be back with you in a little bit. Thank you. All 
All right, guys, we're back inside. The cuts have been made, and let me show you what I ended up with. I ended up with, essentially, an unbroken back panel. Cut it to size just to fit exactly like the last one. You can see I have my tapers on my end. One potential problem I can see myself happening, having is that I realized that this panel is about a quarter inch thicker than the one it's replacing. So that's actually going to be a good thing in the end because it's going to be more insulating and more durable. But the bad thing is this might mean that I have some fitment problem with the side panel. So I'm a little worried about that, but we're just going to go for it and see how it goes. If it uh, turns out that I do need to cut it, I should be able to cut those side panels just like I did. I'll just trim a quarter inch or so off. But uh, installation, I'm going to do exactly the reverse of what I did for the last piece. So I'm going to try to get this side panel in first because it seemed to want us to go and come out last. So here we go. First piece. It's fitting in there nicely. And then what I have here is a little piece of uh, firewood. It's just going to prop it up temporarily. While I then nest this piece in. Now, here could be where we have much sadness if it doesn't fit. And we might get lucky here. Let's see. Another piece of firewood. Here's where we're going to run into problems if we have one. It's with this next piece. Okay. Getting a little crowded in here. So I'm going to need to do some tinkering here and figure out a solution to this, and then I'll show you how I solved it. I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, I'm back after a little head scratching, and I figured out a solution and got that panel in. Basically what I had to do was just nibble a little bit off that top corner, not even in the exposed part, but just in the bevel, and that allowed me to slip it in and stand it upright. So that was a pretty conservative solution, I think, for that little problem. That was all because this fire brick is just a little bit thicker than the other one. So um, it was conservative and it took about 15 minutes for me to figure that out, but it worked, so that's good. Um, the next step I'm going to show you is actually something I haven't seen done before, and um, it just intuitively seems like a good idea for me to do. And if you remember, the last piece failed right back here, and it actually put, broke a hole out of the last panel. And I theorize that the reasons that happened were two reasons. One, that's the most intense part of the heat of this fireplace. So the hottest part is dead center in the back. And the other thing is that's also the place where people could carelessly chuck a log and bust it. So I think the combination of the high heat and probably getting knocked a couple of good times uh, really is what did in that last panel. I had some extra uh, panel material left. And what I've done is I've just cut out a piece and beveled the corners so that it's going to fit in right here. And what that should do is double up the amount of insulation right on that back piece. So right in that really high use area, it's going to double it up. And so I think that's going to give me some more longevity out of this so I don't have to do it as often, okay? And the only thing I made sure to do before I decided on doing this is that the uh, metal grate that comes in here to hold the log, it's still going to fit in there like that. So I have enough room to do that. Um, but I think it's a good idea. It's optional, and uh, if you have extra material, I'd go for it. So the way I'm going to do that is to mortar it in using some fire brick mortar, okay? And the directions on this stuff, I went and exchanged it for the gray stuff, is um, to wet the surfaces with water. And apply it with a, a caulking gun, and then you should just be able to place it in, in this. So, Wet everything down, and I have a little crack in this back. I think it's just how things shifted around. So I'm going to shoot a little bit of mortar in there. And a little bit of 
mortar on the back of this piece. I'm going to put some right along the top. I'm actually just going to do some dabs of it because I want to make this easily removable if I regret it. So, like that. Now we're going to place it in. Alright, so more or less what we have right now is a repaired fireplace, okay? And the directions on this mortar is it needs to dry, air dry for 24 hours. And then both the mortar and this refractory panel also have a curing requirement. So once you install it, you need to do some, a series of small, low fires in the fireplace. And what that will do is force any moisture that's in the brick out. It will slowly uh, dry it out rather than force it out of steam, which could create some hairline cracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry for about 24 hours, and then I'm going to come back and just start a series of small spot fires, really small to begin with. You know, just a couple of pieces of scrap wood from the wood pile, and then I'll go a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and eventually I'll have like one or two pieces of firewood and let it burn, and then after that I should be ready to go. So this is kind of a gradual process, so you don't just immediately re-crack your fireplace. But that's pretty much it, guys. And the last upgrade to my fireplace is I went and I bought a new fireplace grate because my other one was looking pretty sad. So, putting that in there right now, I think we are pretty good to go. All right guys, it's been a few weeks since we made our repair and as you can see, we have a fire going in it. It's a Friday evening and I just got this ripping. I've been using it for a few weeks and it's been working great. So I'd say this is a really satisfying repair for myself. I told you guys I'd give you a difficulty rating and a price on this uh, whole repair. And as far as difficulty goes, I'd say it's about a 2 out of 5 star. The only real difficult thing is you have to be comfortable using a circular saw. Um, this masonry is a little harder to work with than wood, but as long as you're comfortable with the saw, it's not going to be too difficult. Um, other than that, it's more dirty and unpleasant than actually difficult. So if you don't mind calling under a car to change the oil, you probably won't mind this. And if you can use a circular saw, you're going to get it done. The price tag for that refractory panel was $150 delivered, and the other stuff is about $10. So you can get this whole repair done for about $160 versus uh, what would have cost me over $400 just to get the custom cut panels. And I'm sure that a service call would cost about the same. So this uh, was a pretty rewarding job. Not super difficult, and as long as you've got those skills, I'd say give it a go. Thanks for watching.